Hello, you're listening to Abstract AF and I'm Sneha Jaiswal. This episode is all about poetry and we have some poets who have generously consented to share their voice and poetry with us. But before we move on to reciting poems, let's talk a little about World Poetry Day. It is celebrated on the 21st of March since 1999, the year UNESCO, short for United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, decided to observe a special day dedicated to one of the oldest forms of linguistic expression. It's a day to honor poets and an art that for centuries has been a means to bring people together, a means to express our love or despair, be an outlet to our deepest thoughts or the battles we have fought. To start off this episode, we have an Indian poet who goes by the pen name Sos, who published a poetry collection called Masculinity Digs a Grave Over My Body in 2018. It's a beautiful little book for anybody interested in poetry, especially if you're looking for some gender fluid work. I was lucky to have stumbled upon the book while going through a friend's bookshelf and borrowed it immediately. So here is Sos reciting a poem called Confessions. Confessions are the secret of everybody. My mother does not know I am wearing her sari tonight. that my body which does not find a home being a man or a woman often changes sides on this binary to feel at ease with myself at the prayers held after my grandfather's death the audience sat in two groups i only wanted to sit in between because on this spectrum of gender i failed to find a spot to occupy so i went and sat with my grandmother instead holding her as her grief did not come out as tears and the audience was killing her with a facade of pain they did not feel but kept up my mother does not know i buy her sarees only because i want to wear them and i hope i inherit them like old books kept over decades her sarees will be old enough to have a smell which is distinct from that of dust My mother does not know the sins my body has committed. She thinks my body is a sanctum sanctorum that God lives in me and a breath of another man on my skin will defile me. I want to tell her, "Ma, Ma, your God is too weak." She thinks her son is only a breath away from God that God will still hold him when he dies, but God is busy. He is not even thinking of me. I do not think he even lives when I dream of telling my mother of my secrets opening them one after another as knots entangled in a string of rope I often dream of her holding me as I cry when I think of telling her of my sins right from childhood as a boy aged 9 wearing knickers and secrecy her knickers on my body behind closed bathroom doors i dream of her understanding me saying it is okay it is okay when i think of opening another knot telling her ma for that night i groped your breasts i am sorry for the sight of your next morning tears I am sorry. I have often wanted to come and tell you how sorry I was, but I could not gather enough courage. And for that, I am sorry that memory still haunts me. When I tell her this, I dream of her holding me. This was an only memory which prevented us and most of my life i have lived without being hugged by my mother i have often found a love like my mother's hug in a lover's touch but it is just not the same when i think of my body now i think of my mother i think of how my body resembles my mother's more than my father's but i know that my mother will never accept me as her son when she knows my sins 
Instead, what I do know is this, that we all have secrets we never reveal. And when we do, with our words, we kill. That was Confessions from Souza's book, Masculinity Digs a Grave Over My Body. Now we have a poet from northeastern England, Lottie Jean Elliott, reciting a quick little poem from her debut poetry book called Letters to Jupiter. The dominant theme in Lottie's book is self-love, although her poems also explore issues like existentialism, toxic relationships and broken families. Most of the poetry is in freestyle and tend to be very short. The one that Lottie is going to recite for us is called Dorian. Dorian I'm an unfinished portrait. My canvas is an ever-growing, vivid and unmastered work of beauty that will never be complete. But just because this painting may seem unfinished does not mean beyond the layers you see, things do not bloom. That was Lottie Jean Elliott. Now we have a poet who has not published a book yet, but I love her poetry and have been asking her for years to send them to a publisher. Nivedita Niranjan Kumar is a journalist by profession and a total romantic by heart. And here's her reciting one of her poems for us from Bangalore, India. Give yourself to me in bits and pieces, like a treasure map, made solely of doodles, hidden in a book, the key to which you hand out with every kiss, planted amidst the hills, shrouded in mist, and some slipped into my hand when I stand by the sea. Gift wrap your nooks and corners and hand it over on a mundane Sunday, when you shyly whisper, my heart was racing like a hare on meth until I could hug you. Tell me about the place you call home, a wall you love, and what makes your skin crawl, that warms your heart like a bowl of soup, and the color of the sky when you cried. Slide into me like sudden rain knocks on my window, making my fingers shiver and my feet curl in my anticipation. Slip your secrets under my skin like they are finally home. That was Nivedita who sometimes even guest writes her poems on abstractaf.in, our website. So be sure to check out the poetry section there. And moving on to the last poem for this episode, it doesn't have a title. It's poem number seven from Death and Darker Realms, my debut poetry collection. I'm not fond of giving titles to poems because I feel like you're unwittingly forcing your reader to think of the poem's theme in terms of its name. Well, here's poem number seven from Death and Darker Realms. I couldn't pick a memory of the first time we cried over some silly trash film and the tears we would hide, each too proud to reveal a softer human side, but laugh out we would after the tears had dried. That's how we bonded, grandma and us kids, watching old dramas and other such rubbish. Sometimes she would rant, oh, tales just too old, then drown in her radio, become distant and cold when we found new jobs in far off cities from home we never swapped letters or even texts from phones sometimes a voice note she would send us all most of us ignored them unheard they were all then when a call came she would ask us about it you didn't hear my note yes we would lie then and say we forgot to reply she didn't complain much films and radio filled the void Community watching forgotten. It was now done alone. In rare visits to the hometown, not much was spoken. She would be in her corner, eyes glued to screens. One day, it became vacant. Empty forever, the corner. The radio buried in a trunk. Television thrown with the junk. Old memories all disappeared. And now when it's too late, I hear those voice notes. Well, that's all the poetry we have for today. Talk to you in the next episode of Abstract AF.